affectionate nature and playful personalities, but you'll see their histories and working roles are worlds apart. Now stick around and find out which breed might be the better choice for your home. Welcome back to the Femria Boston Terrier Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Will. I'm a canine behaviorist and I'm the founder here at FemriaCanineLeaders.com. This channel is dedicated to helping you learn everything that you could possibly ever want to know about the incredible Boston Terrier, then how you can become a high level canine leader yourself that raises perfect Boston Terrier companions. So if you love the Boston Terrier as much as we do here at Fenrir, start your journey by hitting that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so that you never miss a future Boston Terrier video. So then, let's dive into today's video and we'll take a level look at the differences and similarities between these two amazing breeds. And we'll dig into the history of each breed first to get a sense of their original working role and how that now affects the breed today. And jumping right in, the Boston Terrier was originally a bit larger than we know today and were bred to participate in the blood sports of the 19th century. Now luckily, that trend went away quite quickly and the breed found success as a ratter in factories and as a companion. Now almost all Bostons can trace their lines back to a bulkier ancestor named Judge, who was brought to the town of Boston, Massachusetts in the United States when the breed was really started to be refined and then was developed into the breed that we know and love today. Now, while the Bostons are a relatively new breed, the ancestors of the Beagle date back before 55 BC, with records of similar small pack hounds being used in the modern day UK. They have been successful and fearless hunting companions, and by the 1500s, most noble houses had a pack of Beagles in addition to a pack of larger hounds. The beauty of the Beagle was their smaller size allowed them to get into smaller spaces, but also didn't require the hunters to have horses to keep up with them. This made them ideal for more relaxed hunts, which catered to the older hunters and those who couldn't afford to keep a horse. Hey guys, very quickly, I just wanted to ask, are you following us over on Instagram? If you're not, there's two accounts I would love for you to check out. The first one is our brand account, at Femria Canine Leaders, where you can see more about our industry-leading products that we create. If you're interested in following me personally, that's at I am Will Atherton, where you can see behind the scenes of me working with some of the most extreme behavior cases in the world and what it takes to run these kind of YouTube channels. And maybe if you just want to be able to come over and chat with me, that's the place for you. So there'll be links down in the description box for both of our Instagram pages. I'd love for you to come and check them out and hopefully we'll chat over there. Now in terms of appearance, the two breeds are similar in size and have short coats, but that's about all they have in common when it comes to looks. Bostons are under 25 pounds and have stocky builds with short tails and large erect bat-like ears. Their fur is short and sleek and they are considered brassiophallic, so grunting and snorting noises along with snoring are common with the breed. The Boston always has a tuxedo type pattern of white and darker colouring that ranges from seal, a very dark brown that appears black, and black and white. Now beagles can weigh up to 30 pounds and may stand a couple of inches taller and are very sturdy even if they lack the stocky build of the Boston. They typically have long tails and long drooping ears with a coat pattern of white, black and brown in large patches. They are also quite loud and have a howl bark that is long and deep. They are gorgeous dogs that excel at digging and sniffing out vermins in your yard, so be prepared to wipe them down before coming back inside, as they will have often a face full of mud. Now, when it comes to trainability, Bostons are easily trainable and can make a good canine for first-time owners. They don't care to do much at a competitive level, but they do make excellent emotional support and companion dogs. One thing to watch out for is that they are very cute, and they know it. They will do whatever they need to do to get more treats and cuddles, and you have to be careful because they are prone to obesity because of it. Now, beagles are quite trainable, but probably aren't the best pick if you want to compete in obedient sports. It's in their nature to follow their nose and wonder where the sense of the world take them. So they are also not necessarily the kind of canine you want to have off-leash outside of a fenced or enclosed yard. You'll find they can be stubborn, especially if they get bored with the training session. You'll need to be exceptionally patient as their calm and consistent leader, since losing your temper will only make them even more stubborn, which will only further hamper your training experience. 
Now, the Boston has held the nickname the American Gentleman since the early days of its development in the States. This is partly due to the tuxedo markings, but mostly because of their charming and polite personality. They are deeply devoted to their family and are an endless source of entertainment with their frequent clownish antics and playful natures. Beagles are very similar to Boston's in that they are quite friendly and playful, but they have a much higher energy level. You'll need to work the Beagles mind and body each day with long walks and scent games to prevent destructive habits. They are though excellent walking and running partners that are always up for an adventure, so if you're an active outdoorsy person, they could be a much better fit. Now, both the Beagle and the Boston are easy to travel with because of their size, but you'll always want to keep them both on a leash, even maybe around your front yard, since they both have zero street smarts. The Beagle is a sporting dog who both needs and enjoys lots of activity each day, while the Boston is relatively low energy and more easily managed. Bostons are ideal for older canine leaders who aren't as active and can be home most of the day, where, like I say, the Beagle might be better suited for younger, active, more outgoing families. So I hope you enjoyed that quick breakdown of these two incredible dog breeds. If you did enjoy it, hitting the thumbs up button is always very appreciated. And don't forget to hit subscribe and turn on that notification bell, as we've got two dedicated Boston Terrier videos coming here to this channel every single week. And I cannot wait to speak to you again on the next episode of the Fenrir Boston Terrier Show.